Hey, hey, you're back in the garage with EZ, Jeezy. In this video, I want to talk about electrical systems. Sooner or later, when you have these 50-year-old Volkswagens, you're going to start having electrical problems. Uh, tail light, brake light, turn signal, uh, something with your electrical system. And I just want to sh show you guys uh, something that I have just done today and hopefully it'll help you with uh, your troubleshooting and there's more always more than one way to do everything I always consider myself I'm a nobody who tells everybody about what I'm doing and when I am successful with what I'm doing I want to share that it stimulates there's always a better way there's always another way but I it stimulates the thought process for everybody and uh, so I'm so uh, absent-minded that sometimes when I have trouble a few weeks a few months a few years down the road I can come back to my YouTube video and say how did I fix that the last time so at any rate Anytime you're having electrical problems, uh, you want to check your battery voltage, you want to check your ground, uh, what we've got going on here today. Another thing that's really important is uh, on your fuse block. Uh, it's underneath the dash on the inside of the car. You have these round fuses. I got pulled over a couple of years ago. Officer said my brake lights weren't working, and so uh, my tail lights were working. And he says, "Use your tail lights. Put your tail lights on till you get home, and then you know make sure you get that corrected. You don't want to get hit in the back." And uh, so I thanked him, and he did not write me up a ticket. That was uh, I felt blessed when I got home. Started troubleshooting. All it ended up being was right there rolling the fuse. And I could have probably, if I'd have thought of that, I'd have done it right then on the spot. And people play with those fuses and stuff. They're a pain in the neck. Uh, but at any rate, what I got pulled over again uh, a few nights ago. And uh, I don't have the garage door open because there's snow on the ground. It's cold out there. And I spent a bunch of money getting this garage heated up. Okay, here was my scenario. When I just had the car during the daytime, the brake lights and turn signals work fine. What the problem ended up being when it was, became nighttime and I put my headlights on and applied the brakes, the right rear tail light went completely dead and the left one stayed on with the running light and the tail light together and police officer pulled up right behind me we were waiting at a railroad track for a train to go by and then uh, I got stopped at a stoplight about 50 feet further and uh, so he pulled me over and he did not give me a ticket <laughs> I am blessed and if he ever saw this video I just want to say thanks for not hassling me sir uh, and uh, he says, I don't know if you know this or not, but he told me what was going on and checked my registration and insurance and all that stuff was in order. So now today it's like, okay, I have tried before I did anything. I wanted to simulate what was happening and see if I could get it to happen again. And indeed it happened again here in the garage. I took the tail light lens off. Uh, I started jiggling the bulbs. Uh, this is your uh, running light and brake light bulb right here. It has two elements in it. Your turn signal bulb is separate. It goes on top. It only has one element in it. And I, I'll tell you, I was just so frustrated. And I was tapping on it and fiddling with it. So let me show you some of the tools that I used to fix this and how I went about it. Uh, it seemed to be working fine. This left side was not giving me a problem, but I'm going to go through the same procedure that I did on the right side. So, um, a plumber's fitting brush is a nice brush to have. You, it gets inside the socket. This is a uh, just a, a soft wire brush for cleaning parts and so forth. That's good to be scraping on some things, and we're going to be using that to clean up this old galvanized stuff that's inside here. 
Water's gotten in here. This is a Baja. The fenders just don't have that good of support. And although there is a ground right here, you've got a ground connection right here on the bottom that goes to this piece of metal which grounds the sockets and the socket the light bulb base is the ground and the and the two little uh, deals on the back is where your connections and made now over time and years and vibration and moisture those things are going to corrode up. You can take your bulb out. Sometimes you can just rub them back and forth on your pants. I've seen people rub them on the concrete, but believe me, that concrete's rough. In a pinch, you do what you got to do. If if you become aware of it on the side of the road or you have to fix it on the side of the road, you know, guys with boat trailers, they're always fighting. Any guy, any type of trailer seems like we're always fighting. I'm going to replace this gasket. It's old and dried out and cracked. And I have a new one to uh, put on. Now, um, I'm going to take this plate off. I'm going to look at the back. Uh, another tool that I found real helpful was a, uh, a pick. And there's different kinds. You can just keep a little small piece of wet dry sandpaper with you. That works good for your points. Uh, sometimes just taking a piece of white paper. Not necessarily a receipt. But if, like, notebook paper that's kind of a little bit thicker, uh, even like a legal pad piece of paper, any kind of scrap paper, and rubbing that between the contact area sometimes is, is just soft enough. Now, what, tip, what I'm showing you here is this pick. There's no power going to this back here, so I don't want to short it out and blow my fuse. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this... Uh, contact point towards me just a little bit I'm bending it actually okay and I'm going to uh, it was working just fine switch hands here but uh, this is the side that makes contact with a bulb so this is the side that you want to be clean I might drag some uh, emery cloth apart across there because this can kind of scratch things up but like I say, it wasn't, and this is the original one. This is brass. This is the German one that came on the car. And here is the trick. Boy, this, this, even though I had the ground, and even though I cleaned the bulb, the little tangs that go in there, you've got a deep one and you've got a shallow one. Well, you go all the way in, and you got to pull back towards you. That's the ground. That's the contact spot. And that was the part that ultimately I think was giving me the most fits. And you can see that water's been in here and I got corrosion. And there's another one on this side and it's on that top. And that's what you want to make sure that you got clean. And your, your, the bases on your bulbs alone, I mean these bulbs are getting crazy. Uh, the quality is just not there it's like everything else. And sometimes I'll, I'll go in there and the glass will be loose and or an element can fall, burn out, and fall down the bottom and create a short between the other element. Um, there's all kinds of crazy things that, that come up with electrical. Now, of course, you want to uh, push on and off. If you've got these uh, push connectors, um, sometimes just taking a pair of pliers, a needle nose pliers or something, and gently squeezing those if they're sloppy. If they're sloppy, uh, and like I said, this side was working fine, and this goes right up into the socket. This bottom bulb right here is your backup light. And, um, okay, here's something else I found when working on this thing. So, it seemed to, I needed to have my brake light on. And in this car, sometimes I'll just take a broomstick or a long pole or piece of pipe or something, and I can stand back behind the car, and I can push down on the brake pedal and see my brake lights come on or whatever I'm doing back here in the back of the car. In a sedan, it's a lot more difficult to do something like that. It's darn near impossible. If you have pop-out windows, you could fold the seat down maybe if you have a reclining seat and maybe reach back through the pop-out window and do the same thing. Or you could just take a, uh, a jumper like this, just a average typical jumper, and you can go to your brake master cylinder and you can uh, just go across the terminals on any one of those master cylinder switches. 
Okay, so what all this is is a switch. So when you short this out, what you're doing is the same thing. It's a normally open switch, and when you put pressure on the brake, brake it closes the switch. Now on on this particular car, this is a '69, and it's always good if you have some type of a, a wiring diagram. Um, so it's a normally open switch. So what you do is just take your jumper wire and you put one on one side and one on the other side, and that will should make your brake lights come on. I found that on my car there was three of them, three switches on there. The front one was for the brake light that is on the dashboard, the warning light that goes on your dashboard on a 69. The center one, I'm not sure what it did, and the back one made my rear tail brake lights come on. So that's the one that I was using. Now the problem was how when you work on something alone, like I do most of the time, it's like, okay, how can I operate this thing without messing around, running back and forth, back and forth? So I decided, I've thought about this in the past, and I just decided it's this is going to happen. I already had this extension cord. Let me put you on the stand here. <laughs> All right. So... This is a, a short extension cord. I bought this while I was working down in the crawl space. Seems like I had a power tool and I just needed a little bit further to go. And so it's just a typical, typical with the ground, your typical extension cord, right? So what I did, I went back to the store and I bought two of these repair ends. One is male, one is female, and I bought a couple sets of the uh, alligator clips, and I wired them up, and I decided that I, you, for DC voltage, what I'm doing on the car, and I know there's going to be somebody out there that's going to say, oh, this is dangerous, you shouldn't leave this laying around, if somebody plugs that in, then you got 110 there. If you're that safety Sally, go back to bed. Maybe you won't get hurt there, you know? This is an adult channel, and for people that are working on stuff and are smart enough, I hope, to be careful with this stuff and where you leave it around. But this way, I've just made a giant test lead. So if I go from black to black, that is one continuous wire, right? And if I go, I just decided, doesn't matter what color you use, typically on the Volkswagens, black is your hot lead. If you come back to the choke or the ignition or the coil, uh, black is what uh, the factory used. And so I just took two different colors in case the time ever came up when I needed to distinguish or was only using one lead. In this case, I'm going to go to the front of the car, doesn't matter which end you use, and I'm going to take this on that... Uh, switch on the master cylinder and I'm going to clip this on and it's kind of hard to do and it's almost impossible to get the camera down there so I'm going to shut you off and do that so then when I have that the leads connected to that switch on the master cylinder I can stand back here I can clip this together and the light brake both brake lights should be on all the time if I want to make it go on and off I can just touch it here and I can be standing behind the car with a lot less hassle and be making all this stuff work and I hope that uh, all this was uh, in the frame of what, <laughs> of what we're filming here I guess you could say because I don't want to do this again so I will turn you back on shortly Okay, it's quite a hassle for me to get the other end on the switch uh, without taking the tire off and it's kind of cramped in here right now. So now I've put the test leads on the switch. I turn my ignition switch on. If you can hear that buzzing in the background, that's my electric fuel pump at the front of the car. And now I want to check my brake lights. I can turn it on and off by doing that. Of course, just leaving it on is going to leave it on. And this way I've got a very long test lead and I can use any type of extension cord because I have the male and female plug set up with alligator clips on them. And of course, you don't want to have this laying around where somebody <laughs> leave it plugged in. When you're done with it, you want to take it off the cord 
so that in case somebody plugs it in, it's not going to create an electrical short on the 110 volt wherever they plugged it in. And it might just be me. So when you're done with your test leads, unplug these, plug them together because they're male and female, and put them in your electrical junk box, okay? Now, we've got, let's just put this on. And <laughs> it just fell off. So put it on better. Okay. So I'm boy, you can see just that little bit on the ground. See what a what a difference in brightness that made on the ground? Just giving it a little turn. Well we'll want to clean that up a little bit better. Also, I decided that I wanted to give these LED lights a try. They didn't have the kind I wanted. I wanted the round one with several LEDs lights in it and they didn't stock that but I wanted to try something this was an 1157 and it LEDs are very rugged and durable and they put out a different kind of a light a white a, a little bit of a white light now you can see I'm still fighting I'm still fighting a little bit of a ground issue here see and that's gonna and this is this is what we're going to clean things up and we're going to solve it. Now, you can take, if you're searching for a ground type of a problem, with either bulb, the socket base is your ground. So if I take this and touch it to the ground, or a better ground, we're just doing this early on, these are early stages of playing. I'm gonna go, you guys can't see this. I'm gonna go to my, evidently, <laughs> that's not the problem. I have to get this in there, into the socket. This feels, this socket may be done and this and this is typical of preventive maintenance you have something that was working fine and then you start messing with it and then you start creating problems or you break something i was in uh maintenance building maintenance my whole life and uh we were always getting these preventive maintenance lists of things to do and punch lists and things and a lot of times that's exactly what we do in the process of taking something apart to inspect it we would break it and this is typical. I guess this is good for you to see it, but you just have to be patient and keep working at it. And it almost looks to me like somebody sprayed some silver paint in here at some point in its life. And so I don't really like that. I'm going to turn the key off because I don't want to short things out and blow a fuse under my dash. And I don't want my fuel pump constantly running, putting out pressure. So, yeah, let's see if we're still in the shot here. So, I am going to just uh, do a little bit of cleaning here with the brush. Get that old paint off of there. I think that's what somebody must have done. There was just corrosion in there. And I came up with an idea to help the reflection and to have something brighter rather than spray paint in there and create more problems what I'm doing is I'm going to use a piece of this uh, this is what the tinners use it's a aluminum steel sealing tape for duct work and such so I'm going to take a piece of that and my scissors and I'm just going to make a straight cut across that and then I'm going to make a V like this at the top. And then I'm going to peel the back off. And I'm going to lay this up here and push it into the area. Now this stuff is 
It tears real easy. You'll figure it out. It's not exactly cheap, but I like this stuff it, it, for different things. So I'm just going to... And this, I'm doing this for reflective purposes. This stuff will take the temperature, even though it's wrinkled up, it doesn't really matter. If you keep working it, you can smooth it out. I'm just going to keep going here for the sake of having this on camera. If I don't like the way this turns out, I can do it over. And I am just going to go over the slot completely. I'm going to come down and you can tear it or cut it or use a pocket knife, whatever you got handy. Now, it's nothing to write home about, but it's better than it was for sure. Now I've covered right over that socket, so I'm just going to poke a hole where that socket goes. And I'm going to let some of that go to the inside, because remember how we were talking about the base is, is part of the ground? So, I'm going to use this uh, LED. And I am going to do a little more cleaning on my tabs here. I think what I'm going to do is take these uh, these two screws out, lift it up, and I'm going to take that uh, emery cloth and I'm going to rub it on all of those contact areas. But that's pretty boring stuff. It's like watching paint dry. So for right now. I'm going to uh, just stick this back in. There's a long one and a short one. You'll figure all that out when the time comes. I'm going to turn my key back on. This, like I said, this is not the correct LED bulb that the their catalog called out, but it's something they had on the shop, and I thought I'd give it a, a shot. And what I've done is uh, somebody was kind enough to give me two left hand uh, tail lights, and what I decided to do was replace this one. This one was working fine; it was it was bright enough, uh, especially a direct shot. But here's the new lens and gasket on this side, and it it does look better, you know. Turn signals and stuff. Now, let's see what happens when we turn our headlights on. Okay, and this was the problem, child. When I did that, this whole tail light on the right went black, and all I did was spend a lot of time cleaning and scratching my head and trying to figure out what I was going to do from there. So now we'll put on the uh, the right turn signal which is the top bulb and I do not have the bulb in on that side but uh, I think this is going to keep me safe. I just don't like being pulled over uh, unnecessarily and uh, be sure your license plate uh, bulb works. That's a good thing to check and I think we'll call that a wrap, but uh, I hope I've given you some ideas on how to work with your electrical problems and some things that I did. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to ask me what that number is for it says uh, 1157 and uh, it doesn't get hot and guess what? It's still not on. It should be on now. There we go. See? and. I wasn't having a problem with this one, but that was a side that was acting up. And the wire from that side, your whole wiring harness comes down the driver's side of the car. And then it goes over there. That's like the tail end on the right rear over here. So, I obviously, 
either don't have that plant that didn't have it seeded completely. See how that gets dim and then gets bright? That's ground. That is a ground issue. And right here on the bottom, I don't know if I, I don't have another light flashlight handy. Maybe that'll help. Right here, this piece of sheet metal is, is your ground. And just as long as we're on the subject about electrical stuff, um, this is the Chinese version, the new Chinese version, and I was thinking of throwing it in there, but it didn't have, uh, I just didn't like it. Um, these are both left, so the, the main base, I would only have one of them new. And I thought, well, really, it doesn't make any difference because all these, the rest of the parts inside are plain. And as a final little footnote, I wanted to mention to you that this screw right here, here's a little free advice. If you have a 34 pick 3 carburetor and it's not working properly and you've cleaned it, and if you can't hear a little ball rattle in that carburetor, if you shake it, now I'm not saying with the float in there, with the float out of it and the carburetor disassembled, if you take the bottom base where the bowl is and shake it and you don't hear a little ball rattling, you'll see a spot in the bottom of that float bowl that this particular, it's this particular thread. And you can thread this down into that uh, hole and lift up on it and it's a press fit and there's a ball underneath there and you've got gunk in there so you want to get that gunk out make sure the passages are clear and get that cleaned out real good and then you could put put this back in and just tap on the top of it to replace that and you don't want to get carried away and be silly with that thing because it's going to get screwed up and it won't it won't fit quite right. Uh, it'll, you don't want a loose fit. It's got to be a press fit. I believe it's a tapered hole. So just be kind of gentle with it and keep that in mind. Here's a, here's a wire block where they join the two sides uh, on the rear of the car. This was included. But these sockets, this is some kind of plated stuff and it's the springiness to it is not very good. Um, it's just not, I would rather refurbish what's in there and even the way these sockets fit and I don't want to try I don't want to break the old sockets taking them off the old one so that's what I use that silver tape for um, this is a great uh, source for wiring diagrams uh, not all of the climber VW books shop manuals like this have it this one says right there full color troubleshooting pages. I'm not going to give you a close-up shot of that because uh, YouTube is getting so tight with everything. Language, copyrights, and uh, you know, all it takes is something like that. And I'm going to keep working on this and it takes a lot of time and I'm running out of memory on my camera so uh, we'll call that a wrap. And I hope this was helpful to somebody. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy, out.